Hello, hello! We are going to talk about choice boards specifically in Spanish class today. A choice board is basically like a grid of options you give your students. Sometimes teachers refer to these as menus for their students, but essentially what it is is a list of options you give your students to practice with a concept to be assessed or to just work on some things that you want them to work on. But the key point here is that they have a lot of things that they can choose from and the students get to make the decisions in how they're doing their learning, their practicing, or how they are being assessed. My name is Ashley aka Senorita Spanish and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here please make sure you give this video a thumbs up, click subscribe, and ring that bell. And if you're already subscribed, thanks so much. I really appreciate your support. So when might you use choice boards? Choice boards are really great for a fast finisher opportunity so you might make a choice board that goes with a particular unit you've been working on and students will work on it throughout the unit. It could also be a great option for homework throughout the unit. It's also really handy if you want to do some sort of project with your students but you don't want to grade like 200 of the same project, giving students a choice board means that you are going to get different products out of them as they finish their projects. It's also a really great option for a sub plan. If you know you're going to be gone, you can give students this choice board and that will allow them to pick and choose from the options available. And finally, I think that it's a great option to use at the end of the year because you can wrap up your whole year of learning. So you could give them a bunch of choices based on all of the different topics you've studied and they choose from that. So what do choice boards look like? Well, <laughs> it's really common to look kind of like a bingo board actually, but I think that a three by three is probably the easiest way to set it up. If you create the choice board for your students, there's a few things that you want to keep in mind as you create it for them. So one, you want to make sure that all of the activities are tied into what you want them to practice in some way, shape, or form. While you're giving them choice, you still want that choice to be directed in a useful manner, right? So you don't want them to be wasting their time. This feels like a no-brainer, but you want the choice board to be related to the thing you want the students to practice. The other thing that you want to keep in mind when you're creating your choice board is that you want to include a variety of activities because this is going to speak to the different skills your students have and the different interests your students have. So one box might include having students draw something or illustrate something or create something. And another box might have them interviewing a stranger or working with a partner or maybe doing something musical or something, right? Offer a variety of activities because you want to speak to this the different interests your students have and the different strengths your students have. It's also really common to have students do more than one activity from the choice board. If you're working with a three by three grid, you might have them choose three things and you could have them do it like a tic-tac-toe. I also find this to be a lot more successful, especially as a fast finisher or a homework project when the majority of the activities are things that students can complete individually or on their own, just because then they don't have to coordinate with someone and they don't have to like find a partner who's also done or find some time out of class where they can work with someone or hunt someone else down. It just makes things a lot easier if they're doing it on their own. They can be tech-based or non-tech-based, totally depends on what your students have available and what you have available in your school. So the key things for a choice board is that you have choices. You have choices that speak to the variety of interests and skills and strengths that your students have. You've decided how many of the choices your students need to do and all of the choices are related to what you want your students to focus on. That's it. All right, now we're gonna look at some examples of choice boards that people have shared that I gathered for examples for this video. I'm curious, have you ever used a choice board in your classes? Comment below and let me know if you have, and if you have, how'd you like it? Like, is it something that you do regularly? Is it something that you're like, oh, never again? How did you feel about it? Comment below and let me know. So this is an example of a cultures and communities choice board from NOAA, and it is for secondary students with a mix of activities that include technology and activities that do not require technology. So I'm just gonna quickly scroll through it so you can kind of skim it and see how it's set up. I will put the links to all of the choice boards that I shared as examples in the description of this video for you so you can look at any of them closer or if you see something you're like, oh, that looks awesome, I really wanna try it out you will be able to check these out for yourself and use them for your classes if you need to. Next example is from Alejandra and it is uh, for elementary students, but it's all based around salsa episodes. So they have an episode that's linked and then they have an activity that they would do with them. And they would watch the video and then do one of the activities that she's got listed below. And like she said, it's for 18 days. So they can just pick and choose from any of the things below as they are working through them. So this way they are still working on the things that she wants them to work on but 
they can do it in their own order and their own pacing at their own time. This example was shared by Andrea and it's a little, it's set up a little bit differently. I love it. I think it's visually very easy to, to see the different activities she has for them. She's got it set up in columns. So we have all sorts of different things. So let me zoom in for you so you can see them a little bit better. Here you go. So under by Lar, they would just pick and choose, right? So she's got different videos and things linked for different styles of dances for them to try. Under Mirage, she's got different um, different TV shows or different recommendations that her students could watch. Escuchar, right? Here's different podcasts. All sorts of different things that the students can choose from on their own. I really love that she has a bunch of different yoga videos linked for them and a set of different, like in different levels and in different lengths. So they could do a really quick one for four minutes or they could do a longer one that's a little bit more difficult for 30 minutes. I also like that she recommends the audio being slowed down so you can slow down the videos on YouTube. So that way it's easier for the students to listen and understand while they're also trying to do yoga at the same time. Talk about mind-body connection, right? Called Lower Elementary Spanish Independent Study. And I love how she has it kind of broken down with, you know, this kind of introduction letter for parents so that way they can see, okay, here's what this is, here's what they're supposed to do. So here is some of the things that she has on the choice board. There's a mix of digital and just, you know, non-technology based things. I'll zoom in a little bit so it's easier to read them. I love that <laughs> this one was really fun. Use your body to form the letters of the alphabet and say them in Spanish as you're practicing. How fun would that be for them to practice making their bodies into the alphabet? I also like that she has linked things with bit.ly so it's easy for them to type in and get there. And then here is the recording sheet. So it's got the date and then the list of the activity they did. I think that's a great way to go ahead and make sure that they are recording their activities and they are picking and choosing. Plus it has a space for their grown up to initial that they did the work. Yeah, hopefully those examples gave you some ideas of how you could use this in your classroom, whether you teach elementary, middle or high school or even higher education classes. It can really be used in all levels in all different topics with all sorts of different materials and resources. They're a really handy thing to include in your classroom. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I really like them at the end of the year when you're kind of feeling like, okay, we need to review and practice, but I would like for it to be self-guided. Boom, choice boards are the perfect thing for you.